creating a premise for Babylon to infiltrate Zion. That thing you call your ministry, because we are going to see these civilizations and how they walk out, they, how they walk out, how they dominate, how they infiltrate. Are you here? This is the first level. There's another level that is higher than this, but we need to put up this level first. If we do the second level, you can actually name Ghana according to its spiritual name. You will name your village. You can go to Nogopo and name it rightly. Hallelujah. All right, so on one side of the column, put Babylon. On the other side of the column, put the New Jerusalem. So you are either establishing Babylon or you are establishing the New Jerusalem. The first thing that the scriptures will have us know about Babylon is that Babylon is called a harlot. This moment we need to define what spiritual harlotry is. Because if you begin to study about the spirit of Jezebel, you will hear the charge against the spirit of De Jezebel is that uh, he makes, he seduces his servants. Wait, what's the charge? Revelation chapter 2. Let me give you the charge against Jezebel. Okay, look for it and tell me. I think it's Revelation 2, 18 or something. Quickly. What is the charge that God has against Jezebel? Somebody go there. Oh, you're not there. You're not fast. All right. Let me dash to. Two verse twenty. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, first of all to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. What is halotry? Spiritual halotry. Now, please pass the mic. Where are the ushers? I think we have, we should have some microphones that are available. Equip anybody in the congregation with a mic to give us a response. It's, it's a school. What is spiritual halotry? Because Babylon is identified in the spirit as a halot. Yeah? Uh, we can't hear you. What is spiritual, what is spiritual halotry? Oh. Okay, now the, the, the microphones are... Spiritual halotry is seven God and seven other gods. It's mixture. If you bring... Are you here? You can switch off your mic. If you bring Jehovah and you mix him with the God of Iron, Jehovah will fade away. Jehovah cannot operate in a mixture. And so the easiest way to send Jehovah out of the template, out of the ecosystem, is to bring another thing and mix with Jehovah. Sometimes when we even see some posters that people, inviting people for meetings, you, you see this person, is from Ashtaroth. And then this one here is a man of God. You know that that meeting will not produce anything for God because it is carrying the touch of a mixture. If the devil knows that he cannot quench your fire, all he needs to do is to get you to relate intimately with someone that doesn't share your values. In five years' time, you will be diminished and your name will be blotted out. So part of the technology of the kingdom of darkness is to facilitate mixtures. Babylon is called the halot. I don't have time to take you to the source. And the source is Genesis chapter 4. Where this, the building blocks of Babylon was put in place. Are you still with me? Mm, I say, are you with me? Yeah. All right. So let me give you a recap. And I challenge you to go study the book of Genesis chapter 4. 
This lecture was supposed to, when we really get set for lecture, we'll come in the morning, we'll end by 4 p.m. Then we'll have the liberty to consult all the necessary scriptures so that every one of us will be clear, your doubts will be clear. Everything you find in the New Testament has its roots in Genesis. So we can trace it from the origin, then you will get clearer visibility of the things that God is talking about. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, what happened was that Cain, when God judged him because of the death, the, the sin of murder, he departed from the presence of God. That means he said, I don't want to be under God's government anymore. I want to live my own life. I want to do my own thing. And then he decided to go establish a city, a civilization that will exist apart from God. So God will not have the right to come into that city to regulate anybody. God will not have the right to come into that place to say, don't do this, don't do that, don't kill. Anything goes in that civilization. That was the initial foundation of the building blocks of Babylon. When, we, when you check the civilization that Cain established, after five generations, then we have a man called Lamech. Lamech was the one that pioneered polygamy. Poly, polygamy. The first man to marry two wives. Even though Cain had left the presence of God, it took five generations of consistent decline for them to evolve polygamy. Are you with me? Everything in that civilization was determined to exist apart from the regulations of God. And then in the seventh generation, we now had other pioneers. People like Jabal, people like Tuba, people like Tuba Cain. It was Tuba Cain that began to de develop weapons of mass destruction. Because when they left the presence of God, they left the protection of God, and they needed to provide protection for themselves. And it was Tuba Cain that was raised in that genealogy that was insightful.